Girl, if you are ready for the purest review of Natasha Donona, my dream palette, you're good here. <laughs> the journey I had to go through to get this palette, maybe that will be a story another time. But today I wanted to give you guys some insights about this palette. If you want to get it, should you get it? Should you not get it? Should you just skip it and spend your money somewhere else? Uh, we're going to get into the shades. I have been using this palette for quite some time now, so I have basically used all of the shades in this palette and created multiple looks with it, you know, just like to go to the office, including this one. For this look in particular, I will create a YouTube short, or maybe I already did create, and if I did so, then I will link the YouTube short in the description of this video right here. So you can just check out all the looks that I created with this palette. I bought this palette in Barcelona and because I was like on vacation. So the price I paid in Sephora Barcelona was 69.90 or I think like 69.99 because I got one cent back. <laughs> I was really not sure in the beginning if I wanted to get this palette, but I thought, okay, like some shades in here are really beautiful. I do love Natasha Denona's products. The marketing of this palette is completely bomb. It's something like personal from her, you know, it's her favorite range of shades she put in here. So if you are a true Natasha Denona like fan or lover or whatever, if you collect her palettes, um, this one would probably be a little bit hard to miss out on. Let's get into the shades. So um, in this palette we have different formulas. We have like sparkly shimmery shades, we have satin shades, we have matte shades, we have duochrome shades, and also like the cream to powder formula. Oh Jesus. Yeah, um, this is like the cream to powder shades in this palette are basically this one and this one. And I have to tell you guys, Oh, these shades give me some hard time, okay? I'm gonna swatch Instinct on my hand and also Edgy. Oh, Jesus, that swatched terribly. God damn it. Okay, so first of all, like, if you look at them really fast, it seems like there is almost no difference between the two shades, but if you look up then in the pan, you see that this one is lighter and this one is completely darker. I don't know what's happening, but whenever I lay down the matte shades on my eyes first, and then I want to deepen it up with the cream to powder shades, it is so freakishly patchy. Sometimes I just like, I say to myself, like, do you really want to use them? I tried to create a look in the morning with those two shades and I spent so much time blending those two shades into my eyeballs and it was just like, I don't recommend using those two shades in the morning because they will give you such a hard time. Now using these two shades on their own, like as a first color, works slightly better depending on what kind of eyeshadow base you have and also what type of brushes you use, okay? Because I tried to do it like on the outer corner and bitch, that did not help at all. Just because I have hooded eyes and I also have like um, extra skin up there, you know, the triple folds <laughs> and my like freaking Botox were off. So like I have like no lift whatsoever. <laughs> These two colors are like divas, okay? They don't like being used on her matte formula. Now, speaking of her matte formula, I'm just like erasing the colors right here. Her matte formula is divine in this palette. I have to tell you that uh, the shades are blending so beautifully together. Uh, there is also enough definition in here because you have a light transition shade, you have a slightly darker one, you have a slightly darker warmer tone, and then you have basically these two deepen up tones as well. So I do like that I have a different range of matte shades to kind of like build up the first shade on my lid and then just kind of like deepen it up and create dimension on my eyes. You know, sometimes some palettes lack it. Like if you talk about Pat McGrath, for example, she has like two shades, 
like a medium tone and a dark tone. Like a medium tone on my skin tone is like, holy shit, that's like way too dark. But yeah, so I do appreciate that there are a lot of matte shades in here. Now, first of all, when we saw this palette, a lot of people, including me, thought, oh, this is just looking like a combination of all her palettes in one. But there are like few new shades that we haven't seen before. And I've seen like people compare this palette to Retro Palette and the Glam Palette, and there were a lot of differences. So basically, when we talk about the shade range, it is absolutely different compared to, you know, other palettes of her. Now, let's now dig into the um, satin shades, because the satin shades in this palette are not that impressive. That's shade Serenity, Risk, and also Spontaneous, like that. So, uh, yeah, they are pretty. Are they like mind-blowingly amazing? But I feel like the same way about all satin shades. Like I don't really use a lot of satin shades, so um, I cannot tell a lot of things about them. Like they're not special to me anyway. So this one is a highlight shade. This is spontaneous. And then we have Risk and this is Serenity. Yes, they are great for using on the inner corner or maybe like building up your look and uh, making it a little bit darker on the outer corner, but they're there, you know? That's the only thing I have to say about it. They're there, they're working. Now I want to talk about two other shades, which are her kind of like this shimmery, flaky formula, I would describe it. Um, so let me swatch shade Invention, which is this tangerine, orangey shade and also shade Thrill. Now Thrill, ooh, there's also a little bit of multi-chrome going on here. It's this pinkish one, okay? Now, um, this shade is absolutely beautiful. When you lay it out on your eyes, it goes on the brush perfectly. You can just kind of like swoop it in there. This shade is a bitch, okay? <laughs> it swatches really flaky and I cannot pick up this shade on a brush without having enough pigment on it. And also, like, I would always have fallout when using the shade. So the only way I can use the shade is basically either with my finger or the shade, like, even disappears throughout the day. So um, using NYX Glitter Primer could be an option, but... It's just a little shame because it is a really beautiful shade, this one, and it's not living up to my expectations. So on the other note, let me grab the shade from uh, BH Cosmetics. And so let me just put it right next to it. Like I would have loved to have this shade in there, okay? That would have been like so much beautiful and also like the quality. Okay, like if this shade was as high in quality as this one, we wouldn't have like any problems whatsoever. Um, now we have basically just one shade left and I feel like that shade in particular is like the star of this palette. That shade will probably drew in a lot of people to buy this palette and that's the shade Vision, which is a multi-chrome shade I don't know if you can catch the shift right here, but if I'm looking at it from my side, it's green to pink. Um, so this shade in particular, do you see like it's kind of like morphing into another tone? So it is green. Like if you like if you see it, this is what I see from my point of view. Do you see that greenness? Like it's almost as green as my shirt. That's what I see. This shade is absolutely beautiful. But let me grab the Tree Chrome palette because there is a shade called Color Flip, okay? And I was like, yeah, it looks almost the same. So let me take it and I will basically swatch it. So the difference between these two shades is the My Dream shade is a little bit more vibrant, right? And it is a little bit more going to the pink side. 
That shade from the Trichrome is uh, a little bit more leaning towards the purples and the green shift is there, but it, it's not as vibrant as the My Dream shade. But like on the eyes, they will just be the same, guys. So like, do you know what I'm talking about? I would have put a different shade in there. Like, I don't know, like I would have done something different. Like, I don't know what, maybe something like a purple going to maybe like orange or a purple going to a green or a purple going, like, I don't fucking know. Like I'm not a palette designer, so don't listen to me. <laughs> if this is like your first palette you buy from the Natasha Denona, I think you will be more or less satisfied um, with the shade range because it has a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of everything, basically. Do you need this palette? Listen, girl, I'm not your mom. I can tell you what to do, okay? But from my perspective, right? Like, I have a lot of her palettes and I thought, okay, I could have missed this one. Like, I shouldn't have bought it uh, after using it. So I was like a little bit disappointed. But if you don't have any other palettes and if the color store really speaks to you and you are okay with those cream to powder shade being bitches sometimes, <laughs> and if you want to really like learn how to work with them, um, then of course, like who am I to tell you not to buy it, right? I wouldn't say like I'm so impressed with this palette, right? Because although it looks like a really colorful one, um, this is a natural palette. Like this is the look I created today. So I used that multicrum shade on the outer corner. I did a wing and then I used the shade Babies on my complete lid. It is a natural eyeshadow palette. So it would be great to use it to go to work, you know, something subtle. Of course, if you want to go a little bit more colorful, you can always dip into these shades right here because if you use that shade on their own, it's gonna be pretty colorful. Like in terms of like, what kind of number would you give this palette? Like if you could rate it to 10, my shirt is not behaving properly today, Jesus. I would say I would give this palette probably probably like a six or a seven out of 10. The packaging is bomb though. The packaging is like, that's the Natasha Denona packaging. Like everything regarding marketing, I've said it multiple times. I love her fucking marketing, okay? I studied marketing in school. I studied commercial communication. So I'm like, damn, you know, like mm, she nails it every fucking time, you know? But speaking about the packaging, somebody pointed out to me that there was a spelling mistake on uh, whatever shade. So I was like, bitch, I have to check it. And yes, exactly. Let me zoom you in. Do you see the shit right here? Spontaneous. So the O and the U have been switched. Someone made a boo-boo. I mean, truly, yes, it's not a really good thing to make spelling mistakes on an eyeshadow palette because this is a plastic packaging. So you cannot just kind of like replace it really quickly. Um, is it hard for me to accept that there is a spelling mistake? Like the OCD freak in me is like, mm, my palette is not perfect anymore, you know? But on the other hand, I'm like, okay, like we have the jam of her original launch where there is a spelling mistake. So I'm trying to find a positive note on this one. So yeah. <laughs> also, it would be so awesome if you could subscribe um, literally. So, um, and if you are subscribed, then I will see you on the next one. So yeah. Bye guys. <laughs>